I have some great news for you today. Topaz have made an update for Topaz Adjust AI. It now works on Apple computers using the latest operating system, Big Sur. I thought that was never going to happen, but guess what? Miracle of miracles, Topaz have updated it. And we're going to take a look at the new update of Topaz Adjust AI today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope everybody is doing great. I'm so excited that Topaz has finally updated Topaz Adjust AI, because if you're an Apple user and you're using the latest operating system, Big Sur, you know Adjust AI does not work, and it doesn't work for me because I'm using Big Sur, and that really bummed me out. So I thought, are you ever going to update this Topaz? Please update it. And they finally have some excited. I have three examples for you today, but I just want to show you they're all raw files. And I started out in Lightroom. They have no adjustments whatsoever. On detail, I removed sharpening and noise reduction because I saved that for Photoshop. I did some uh, sharpening and noise reduction using Topaz Sharpen AI. They're low ISO images, so I didn't need to use denoise on them. Okay, so I've done that in Photoshop, I'm not going to bore you with that because I've done that in advance, but we're going to run all three of these images and I'll show you the images. Uh, I have this image here, just a not a great shot of just some clouds and some trees here without leaves. How boring is that? But we're going to see how uh, Just AI can handle that. And then I have this image of uh, dogwood in spring. And then I have this image of hyacinth, if I'm not mistaken. I'm probably getting this wrong. I'm always bad with flower names and things like that. So I'm sorry. I apologize if I got that wrong. Oh, and I did tell a small white lie because I did set a white and a black point on all of these images in Lightroom. And now we're just going to send them into Topaz Adjust AI and see how Topaz Adjust AI can handle images without any adjustments. Because after all, it is called Topaz Adjust AI. And I think it will be a great uh, product to use at the beginning of your workflow. Now it's time to send this into Adjust AI. Now I went ahead and duplicated the Topaz Sharpen AI layer and called it Topaz Adjust AI so it can work non-destructively. And by the way, uh, Topaz Adjust AI does not work as a smart filter, okay? It doesn't have smart filter capabilities. Hopefully someday, Topaz, you will add that, but right now it doesn't. All we need to do then is come up to Filter and Topaz Labs and we'll launch Topaz Adjust AI. I'll let this uh, fire up in real time. A nice little splash screen there. It's doing a little bit of processing. Now, it always starts you out in this uh, view right here where you see some featured presets. Now, they have a lot of different uh, presets in here, okay? These are featured, and if you click on this drop down, you'll see they have HDR looks, stylized, soft effects. So there's a lot of different looks in here, film looks. And then you can save your own looks under my collection of looks as well. So let's try this out. Let me click on dark mood, and you can see the result you get. Let's click on daylight, and here's what that one looks like. So you got these different presets in here. I generally don't use presets, but they're great, especially if you don't know which way to take an image so you can play through the different presets. But I'm gonna go ahead here and click controls and that'll send us into the controls. And then all we need to do is come here and click reset and it'll reset us back to the original image. And now it's time to play. Now I always like to start up here at the top, auto adjust AI. And this is where the power of this uh, program comes in where you have standard and HDR style. So this is uh, an AI adjustment of your image. So I'm gonna click standard. Now watch the, the original image here. I'm gonna click standard and there it is. It's pretty cool, right? And if you click original here, you can see here's the before and here's the after, or you can hold down your space bar and see the before and after. That's a nice little shortcut. Now you also have a split view here that you can drag this line across here and see before and after. But some nice results. It's a lot more vibrant, a lot more contrast. It looks really good. And we also have the dual view where you can see a side by side before and after. So that's not a bad way to work either. You may want to have the two images side by side and just see how you're affecting them. Let's leave that one up for now so we can see the original next to the adjusted. But what do you think? That's a pretty nice adjustment. It's not an over the top adjustment, but I think it's a beautiful adjustment. Let's try the HDR adjustment out and see what we get here. Here's the HDR adjustment. A little more color. Um, the greens may be a little too hot, but you have this strength slider here. So I think I might just take this and pull this back because I like that HDR adjustment. But I'm going to take the strength slider and pull it back a little bit. But compare the image on the left to the image on the right. Pretty nice. Now, there's one thing that Adjust AI doesn't have, and that is a histogram. So Topaz 
Give us a histogram. We really need it. It can't be that hard for you to add. So please add it. All right. So we need a histogram. And then under the auto adjust, we have brightness, color. With temperature, tint, and saturation, we have clarity, which is contrast, and we have detail. Now, clarity and detail are found inside of Topaz Studio 2, which are my all-time favorite adjustments. Clarity is precision contrast in Topaz Studio 2, and detail is called precision detail. And I use these adjustments on every one of my images. I use them uh, globally, which I'm going to use today in Adjust AI, but I also use them as uh, local adjustments. That would be used with layer masking inside of Photoshop or inside of Topaz Studio too. And we can keep sliding down and we also have split toning in here and we can add grain as well. So we have a lot of different uh, things that we can do in Adjust AI. But let's start working on this image a little bit. I think the exposure and the overall contrast looks good. I may just pull back my highlights just a little bit just to make sure they don't clip. The shadows look good and the color adjustments, they all look good as well because I really like the way the uh, HDR style has affected the color in the image. And um, now I'm going to work with some clarity. Now I may zoom in a little bit and work on the micro clarity because it kind of deals with sharpening as well as the small detail deals with sharpening. And so let's go ahead and zoom in to, I don't know, maybe 172%. And let me just drag this over a little bit here. All right, so let me go with uh, clarity first. I'm going to start to move this to the right. And you can see the amount of clarity I can get. So it, it gives it a bit of a sharpening look. So you don't want to go too far here because remember, I'm thinking globally. On a local type adjustment you can go a lot stronger but on a, a global adjustment I would ease back a little bit I wouldn't go too strong so I think right there and then while I'm zoomed in I'm going to go ahead and work on my small detail now I love detail because it breaks your detail down into small medium and large areas of detail so let's go with the small detail first there's also the boost slider underneath the small detail adjustment now I, I'm not going to go too far just right there you can boost this up I don't use that too often so I'm not going to use it here let me go ahead and uh, click on fit and zoom back out. And now let me go ahead and adjust the contrast in the low areas. So I'm going to start to move this to the right. Now be careful because if you go too far, you can make it look really bad really quick. So I'm just going to add a little bit of low contrast. I think that looks good. Let's try some medium contrast. And now let's work with the highs. And just a little bit of that high right there. That looks good. And now let's work with medium detail. Again, you can go really bad real quick if you're not careful on these controls. They're very aggressive. So now remember, I'm doing a global adjustment. So I just want a little bit of that medium detail in because I'm just doing, again, a global adjustment right there around 11. And let's see about the large detail. Now yeah, I got to be careful with that. I might just give it like that much right there. It looks like a two. How about a two? All right. Now let's go ahead and look at the left compared to the right. I think we're going in the right direction. Let me just see what happens if I add a little bit of saturation to this. Yeah, I mean, if I add a little bit of saturation, it's, it's pulling up these bluish tones in here. So I kind of like that. I might, I'm not going to go crazy here, but I'm just going to add a little bit of saturation. How about that? Compare the left to right. So pretty nice. It's a really nice start. Think of this as the start of your editing process, and I like it right there. I think I'm going to leave that there. And we also have this opacity slider that if you felt you went too far, you can ease back on all your adjustments by pulling this back. When I'm working from Photoshop, however, I don't mess with this opacity slider. I leave it up the whole way, and if I need to pull it back, I'll pull it back when it goes back into Photoshop. Let's click Apply, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. I'm going to leave this in real time. That's how long it takes. So here is my before... And here's my after. So pretty nice, wouldn't you say? Now, remember, I'm using Adjust AI as a starting point for my editing process. So now I'd probably come down and get myself a hue saturation adjustment layer. And with my targeted adjustment tool, I think my greens are a little bit too hot. So I'm just going to click here and drag back in the greens a little bit. You see? And if I wanted to bring these colors out, these bluish tints out a little bit more, I'll click here and drag this to the right. Okay, just like so. But remember, this is a nice starting point. So we started out here. And remember, this image had no adjustments on it. And we come to look like this after Adjust AI. And then with a little bit of hue saturation adjustment, we're taking it to this level. Well, pretty good. And that's a nice start for this image. Let's move on to our next image. 
a nice fresh dogwood flower in the spring. So let me go ahead and launch uh, Topaz Adjust AI again. I've already duplicated the background layer. And we're going to go quicker on this one. So let's just jump over right to controls. And let's click on standard. I always like to try standard first. And then let's try HDR style. Give it a second here to process. Man, too much. I don't like it. Let's go with standard. Generally, I like to use the standard. I'm going to leave the strength at full strength. I'm going to take my highlights and pull those back a little bit just to make sure my highlights don't get blown out. Let's play with our conch, or not contrast, but our shadows up, down. I might pull our shadows back just a little wee bit. The white and black points already been set. I like it. Color is great. I don't need to mess with it. And let me go ahead and zoom in. And let's work with the uh, clarity. I usually like to work with as I'm zoomed in and I'm zoomed in to 224%. And I'm going to usually work with my micro clarity and my detail together because I'm zoomed in. The other adjustments, I like to zoom out for those. But let's go ahead and pull the micro up a little bit. Okay, that's too much. Just a little wee bit. Because remember, I'm doing global adjustments here. And let's work with our small detail. But look how I can bring a lot of sharpness out there. I don't want to go too far here, but maybe somewhere right around there. Now let's go back and click on Fit. And let's do our uh, dual view again so we can see the two images side by side. We're zoomed into 97%, so let's go ahead and click Fit so we can see the entire image. So the image on the left is the before, the image on the right is the after. And so far, we're moving in the right direction. I'm going to work with my uh, clarity now, my low amounts of... Uh, Contrast. So th again, think of clarity as contrast because that's what it is. Give it a little bit of contrast in the low areas and the medium areas of contrast. Give it a little bit there and the high areas. Got to be careful here. And sometimes you can go to the left too if you just want to, you know, remove contrast. You don't always have to add contrast. In fact, on the high, I think I'll just double click high and set it back to zero. I like it right where it is. All right, now let's work with the detail. Let's work with medium detail. Add a little medium detail. Now remember, I'm, I'm not going too crazy here because I'm working on a global detail adjustment. Now, if I was working with uh, localized adjustments, I would be a lot more aggressive. And now let's do our large detail. So I don't want to go too much here, just a tiny wee bit. Okay, so we got the image on the left is the before, the image on the right is the after. I don't want to do any split toning to this or add any grain. I think I'm good to go. I'm just going to go ahead and click apply and that'll send us back into Photoshop. And that's how quick it can be to uh, do the adjustment using Topaz Adjust AI. It really is a time saver. Saver. Here's the before and here is the after. Now, if I felt that's a little too strong, I can take this opacity and just ease off a little bit. Maybe somewhere right in like 85. So again, here's the before. And here's the after. And remember, this is a starting point. I'm only starting the editing process. Now let's move on to our next image. And that is this one right here. Just some uh, clouds and some trees. That's it. Nothing fancy here. But let's see how Topaz Adjust AI can handle something like this. I've already duplicated the Sharpen AI layer and called it Topaz Adjust AI. Now we're going to go ahead and launch uh, Topaz Adjust AI for the final time. And again, we're going to go fast here. Give it a second here to uh, do its thing. It's it's making the uh, thumbnails here for the featured uh, presets or looks. Let's come here and click on controls, and we'll start here with standard. Give it a second. Oh, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and do the uh, dual view here, and let's click on fit so we can see it fit. So compare the image on the left to the image on the right. You know, it's a lot more contrasty. The blues are a lot more vibrant. It's it's a it's a subtle adjustment, but it's a very good adjustment. I think it looks really great. Now let's try the HDR and see if that's too much. I have a hunch it might be, but let's see. Give it a second or two to process. That's actually not that bad, actually, right? So here is HDR style, and here is the regular style. Which one do you like best? Hmm, I don't know. I'm going to stick with the standard style on this one. Everything's looking pretty good here. Uh, so let me see. I might pull my highlights back a little bit because I always like to pull my highlights back just a little bit just to make sure I'm not messing them up. 
Now I'll work with the shadows. I think I'll darken up the shadows just a wee bit to add a little bit more contrast. The color, temperature, tint, and saturation all looks good. Let me go ahead and zoom in to do my um, clarity micro and small detail adjustments. Okay, so let me go ahead in here. I'm at 156% here. I'm just going to go with a little bit of micro here, not much. And you got to watch those clouds. You see those clouds. You can bring details out in those clouds there, but you got to be careful because it's not going to look natural. So I'm mainly looking at the trees. I just want to bring out a little bit of detail there and under micro, which acts kind of like detail in a way because it's dealing with really micro areas of contrast, which kind of gives you a sharpening effect. And now let's go with the small detail, which is also giving you a sharpening effect on small areas of detail. And I just want a little bit right there, not so much. And let me go ahead and fit again. All right, and now I'm just gonna quickly go and do the low contrast. And watch the clouds up in here as I do that. So I can bring out some nice little details up in there with low. And I'm gonna be a little more aggressive here. There's low. Let's try medium. Medium, I can add a little extra medium there. Very nice, now let's try high. And when I go too high, see I can make my shadow areas get really dark and blocked up, so I gotta watch that. So I might add a little bit there because I like the little extra contrast there in the high areas, but maybe right around there is 16. Now again, compare the image and left to the image and right. It's looking really nice. And maybe a little bit of small detail. Not much, because watch the clouds. I don't want to mess those clouds up. Uh, what did I say? I said small detail. I meant to say medium detail. I'm just going to add a tiny wee bit of medium detail, not much. And let's try large detail. Not too much there either. Actually, none. I'm just going to double click that. And as far as the other adjustments are concerned, split tone and grain, I don't want it. But compare the image on the left to the image on the right. Subtle adjustments, but I think very effective adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. That'll send us right back into Photoshop. This is in real time, so it's doing a really nice, quick job to get us back. So here is the before Topaz Adjust AI. Okay, but look at the detail and the vibrancy of the colors and the contrast pop here. You know, it's not an over-the-top adjustment, but I think it's a very good adjustment and a very... Um, it doesn't have that HDR look and an over-processed look, so I like it. Again, here is the before, and here is the after. I think some really great results. Let me know in the comment section what you think, and give this a try. And remember, all Topaz products, you can do uh, trials and try these things out and see how they work for you. Well, there it is, everyone. The long-awaited update for Topaz Adjust AI. It is here now, so go ahead. And if you're a Topaz Adjust AI user, go ahead and grab that update. Uh, I think you're going to like it, especially if you are a uh, Mac user using Big Sur. You're going to really like it because it's going to work. It didn't work before. Hey, let me know what you think of Topaz Adjust AI. I'd love to hear your comments. If you enjoyed the tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.